أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي بعد الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم قرآن ويكلي I wanted to share with you from the third juz, just the last ayah, just some things from the last ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah. It's a long ayah, I'll only be sharing with you just a, a few reflections from the first part of this ayah, which is لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها The word taklif in Arabic means to, to be burdened with something. And Allah says Allah does not burden any individual. Allah will not burden any single person. إلا وسعها Except to that person's capacity. Which actually means any trials you and I go through in life, are actually custom tailored to our capability to manage them. What somebody else is going through may not be something I can handle. And what I'm going through may not be something they can handle. The gifts we enjoy in life and the difficulties we suffer in life, the hardships and the trials we suffer in life are actually each of them custom tailored to our own individual personalities. So Allah says He does not burden anybody more than they, they in particular are capable of bearing. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها the other thing that's uh, remarkable, remarkable about this ayah is there are some things that all of us are equally responsible for, right? So there are commandments of Islam that you can't say, well, I know you can do it, but I kind of, it's not my personality, like five prayers, for example. You can't say, well, mashallah, I know you pray five times, but I could do it in Ramadan, but usually it's like impossible for me. I'm not able to do that. You can't make that excuse because these are a few of the commandments of Allah are ones that Allah put on every nafs. He put it on every individual that you have to be able to do it, right? And there are very, very, very few, few, few exceptions to those that are that, that have to be in very minute cases. And even then, there's like differences of opinion. But you, they're pretty much universal laws, you know. And the the major things that are forbidden and the major things that are obligatory on Muslims, you cannot make the excuse for yourself that Allah will, you know, Allah understands that I am not exactly the prayer type. Or I'm not a morning person, so I don't I can't really do Fajr. That's not gonna be the case. Allah will Allah burdened us with these responsibilities, knowing that every single human being is actually capable of praying five times. Every human being, every Muslim is capable of staying away from haram. You're capable of doing these things. So when you tell yourself you can't, and when you convince yourself that you can't, then you're actually denying something Allah said about you that you actually can that you are capable, and that Allah would never have given these things to, for you and me to do if we weren't capable of doing it. So you have to ask yourself, am I being true to myself when I say I cannot? Or is Allah being true when He says that yes you can, that I wouldn't have given it to you unless you could have handled it? This is the, the really honest to yourself question you and I have to ask ourselves, especially when it comes to the major commandments of Allah Azza wa Jal. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وصحها. And finally, لَهَا مَا كَسَبَتْ وَعَلَيْهَا مَا كَسَبَتْ I'll take half a minute just to share one beautiful thing with you. Allah says, a person will benefit from whatever they earn. They'll have for themselves whatever they earn. And they will go, whatever they earned in terms of sin will go against them. So there are some things you earn that will go for you, and there are other things you earn that will go against you. But in the Arabic, kasaba, which is easier, was used for good deeds, what, you, what works for you. And iktasaba, which is actually harder to earn, was used for bad deeds, which is weird because we think sins are easy to earn and good deeds are hard to earn. But Allah is actually telling us in this ayah a secret. Sins may be easy to earn in the short term, but what you pay for them in the long term bring about so much difficulty and what you've earned in terms of problems and difficulties in your life is so much hardship because of that disobedience to Allah that it actually doesn't count as something easy. Like stealing may be easy, but doing time in jail may be pretty hard. So what you did as an act of stupidity may have been really easy on you at the time. But the price you paid for it made it a very difficult and bad thing that you did for yourself. And getting a job and working hard and earning money the right way may be really hard. But the hardship you save yourself, compared to that, what you're doing is pretty easy. 
The alternative is pretty easy. That's the view Allah wants us to have of good deeds and bad deeds. Good deeds may require a lot more work, but Allah will make them easy. And bad deeds may be much, much easier to do, but you will pay the price and you'll realize how difficult, how much difficulty they actually put you in, in your life. So don't over, overestimate the burden that Allah has put on you as far as responsibilities and don't underestimate the weight of sin. Don't underestimate and don't think that it's just something I do, who cares? And not think about the burdens and the tr troubles it'll bring you tomorrow and especially when you and I stand in front of Allah. Barakallahu li wa lakum, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.